thank God I wasn't like suicidal or anything, but it was, you know, it was a dark time. It was a dark time. And I, I definitely feel like, um, if I didn't, um, have any sort of skills, especially just like baseline communication skills and trust with Javi, um, I think it could have definitely spiraled down. You know, I would have gotten worse. Not knowing that Christina, you know, suffers from anxiety and depression. If you don't know those things and how people navigate through that, it, you know, as a man, you're very solution oriented. Oh, let me take care of you. Let me fix the problem for you. What do you mean? I don't understand it. And you get into mm -hmm. that mindset. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple, Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couples Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments, and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. So we've created not only an avenue where you can hear about people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub or drink and share their stories. People like today's guests, Javier and Christina. Thank you so much for being on our podcast today, guys. It's our pleasure. Absolutely. We're very excited. Thank you for having us. And we were just talking before we, we came on. Uh, you guys are in California. Yeah. The temperature over there right now is... It is, I'll let you know right now. I think it's like, what, 50, something like that, which is, is actually it? considered, oh, 54. 54, sorry. 54. 54, and that's actually considered brisk for most Northern Californians. Yeah. You Not gotta, that I'm one, but. You got to wear your mittens. Yeah, they, they're they all like got their hoodies on, they're, you know, all of it. I think we are at a balmy <laughs> Oh, we're, we're actually 27, 27 right today. See, there 27. you go. That's nice. Okay. Yesterday was seven degrees. So I think we warmed up a little bit, which is- There you go. We got a 20 degree win. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Christina and Javier are authors of the book, Boundless Love, Healing Your Marriage Before It Begins. And I think one thing that was really awesome that kind of stood out was that your faith has been your therapy, your medicine, and your remedy. Ah, oh, thank you. That well said. Yeah, that's that's right. And uh, it's still, it's still that. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stop it ever doesn't, being that. Did, yeah, we didn't <laughs> let go. We we still have um, a refill every month. Yeah. For that, yeah. Yeah, it definitely got us through um, a lot of the obstacles that people face, but um, it was very inspiring for us to just share our story because we feel like it's so, marriage is hard enough. And if you can ever talk about what works or what supports people, it's just such a huge gift. And, mm -hmm. and like your work as well, we just get so much from it. And I think all of us as couples, you know, marriages can support marriages. It's, it's a huge thing. Yeah. Well, we are definitely going to get into your story. Before we do that, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? How old are you? What do you guys do for a living? And how long have you been together? Okay. You want to start? You want me to sure. Start? I, I'm uh, very excited because I'm going to turn 50 this year. Yeah. Uh, yes. So super excited to do that. And I think it's a milestone uh, for being an immigrant and a father or two and being married for 16 years. So Yes. Cannot wait to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and we, yes, we've been together a little over 16 years. And um, 
I am a social worker by trade. I work in the community community college system. So I am a faculty member as well as a counselor. Um, I've had many hats. I've worked in city government, but all primarily um, in education and nonprofits. Um, yes, and so we're um, we've been involved in our faith based community since we were engaged, and that's been a huge part. Um, of our spiritual sustenance, I would say. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Exactly. Can you guys tell us the story of how you met? Yeah. Go, you start. Um, well, I, I will tell you prior to how we met. And, and I think God has, you know, he has, a, he has the right plan for everyone. So I was in an, uh, an abusive relationship for five years. Uh, I was getting close to getting married. Uh, it was a destination wedding that I had no involvement whatsoever. I, I didn't participate on what was going to happen on this destination wedding. And I wasn't even, um, I wasn't even the one that bought the ring for, for this lady. So it was more like, mm-hmm. you know, when I think when you're in an abusive relationship, I think you lose sense of what is worth to you. And, and that's what happened to me. I felt like, well, this is it. This is the way it is. And, and then, uh, thanks to, thanks to God, um, God has, um, you know, a fun way to wake you up. And I remember, uh, this lady happened to live and say, listen, I'm leaving some stuff in the oven. Make sure you, you turn it off. And I didn't, and that, that dish got burned. And, and when she came back, she's like, I cannot believe you did this. And that was the, the tipping point of a mm. huge argument, which I left the house. And I'm thinking, this is it. I, I got to do something different. So I started uh, healing myself from five years of, of very verbal abuse and manipulation. And and I think I was like really nurturing myself. And that's when my best friend called me and said, hey, listen, um, I think I, you got to meet this lady, this girl. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't believe in blind dates. And, and right now I'm in my main cave and I'm doing yeah, really well. Cave. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm really healing myself from all this. I don't, I don't think I really, and he was very persistent. So like, no, listen, you got to meet her. You really have to meet her. And I'm like, all right, listen, if things don't work out, you and I, that we know each other for 35 years, we're going to stop talking to each other. And then I, I got invited and my friend said, well, listen, I'll tell you what, instead of being a blind date, come over to my house, mm-hmm. I cook, safe environment. If you don't like it. You can always say goodbye. You got to work <laughs> the next day. So I did that. Yeah. And I... um. So for me, I, the reason how we hooked up or how we connected was that Javi's, so his best friend, his first American friend when moving from Spain to the U S was Lewis and Lewis is his best friend who um, match was the matchmaker, but he's married to Sheila and Sheila and I worked, worked together for about five years. And so Sheila would listen to all of my dating disasters, you know, like she was my, colleague slash friend that I would confide in. And, you know, she was just that girlfriend that was kind of like, yeah, if you're dating a guy and he's making you cry, that's not really good. Like that's bad. You know, that's not acceptable. So she was a confidant and, um, I had been, you know, in and out of relationships and, there were a couple times where she had mentioned, well, you really got to meet Javier, you know, Lewis's best friend. And the, just the timing never lined up. And that was for like four years. Um, and so eventually um, I had broken up um, with someone as well, like be, a little bit before Javi. And I was just in a really good place with myself. You know, I, I was doing my thing. I was traveling. Um I was just feeling like, you know what, I, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be okay. And it was, and I had done a lot of healing work on myself as well. And so I was in a good place. And so she was like, oh my gosh, Lewis contacted Javier. You got to come over for dinner, like (laughs) in two days, you need to come over. So I was like, okay, well, I didn't have plans. I thought, all right, well, you know, why not give it a shot? So 
but I really felt like, you know, there wasn't much pressure. It was not that big of a deal. Right. So we met and, um, the joke is, is that I was living in San Francisco. Javi was living in more in San Jose, uh, Silicon Valley at that time, Javi was in tech and I was working closer to the city. And, um, he, Lewis told Javi that I practice yoga. So immediately Javi pulls in and sees my car with like a peace bumper sticker and is like, she's a freak. Oh my gosh. She's a vegan. She's a hippie. This is never going to work out. You know, like how your mind goes through that kind of stuff. And, um, so he came in and, you know, I was polite, but, um, I was, I guess I would say reserved, you know, and, um, and we just started, you know, bantering and kind of clicking humor, sort of, you know, we both are kind of sarcastic. So we kind of hit it off. And um, he was so happy because during dinner, uh, Lewis is a butcher. He's now, he's no longer a butcher now, but at the time he was a butcher. And so he had cooked all this meat and there was this big platter of meat. And I was the first one to go in and grab a piece. And so Javi internally was like, yes, she's not a vegan. <laughs> So the rest and, is kind of history. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, it's funny. I I wasn't I wasn't aware of yoga, and I wasn't aware of the nutritional um, gifts that being a vegan gives you. And and it turned out to be that you know I appreciate yoga. I love yoga, and and I was a vegan for a while after I met with her. So it's it's funny the things that I was not. He was, he which was, is yeah. ironic. The <laughs> things that you fear the most of another person, mm -hmm. those are the things, the things that perhaps you got to mm -hmm. explore. So that was, uh, and it, it, it's very interesting. She was, uh, when we were dating, she was in, in, in the spiritual and metaphysics and, and really opened up um, a door for me to explore. So everything that I was afraid of, I became a big mm. fan of it. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Like yeah. years down the line, we're in our, you know, marriage and he's like, I need you to cook. Cause he was having some uh, stomach stuff happening. So the vegan diet was really helping him. And I was like, how ironic is this yeah. moment right now that I'm making all of this. So you never know. Right. So that's how we met. Yeah. Your faith wasn't a big part of your relationship in the beginning when you first met. Mm. Is that correct? Well, I think, you know, we were both on our paths. Um, I was raised in the Catholic church, but I had left the Catholic church. I was involved in a faith community, um, in a Christian non-denominational church in San Francisco. And I was really involved and I, um, did a lot of volunteering and, um, you know, I, I had a core group of friends, like there were a community, which, um, Javi later met. Um, and, I, you know, Javi always jokes that he credits me, like credits himself with bringing me back to the Catholic faith um, because he, his home church is where we got married. It's where we baptized our daughters and it's an awesome, super down to earth, great church. Um, very, very sweet and special to us. So, um, but I think to answer that question, right. I think I always questioned, like I always, um, had a relationship with a higher power i just didn't necessarily know or like have it formalized as much and i think our relationship has been a vehicle or a way for us to explore it and grow spiritually together yeah yeah and what was it about each other that you fell in love with um well javi I was blown away by his generosity. He's an extremely open-hearted, generous person. He's very nurturing and very thoughtful. Um, I think he's a much more thoughtful person than I am actually. And he came into the home with like a fruit tart, bottle of wine. I think he had something else. He's just got this energy of, he's a giver. He's, he's, he, he gives to people. And um, that was very evident to me yeah, yeah. for me uh, christina is um she's a great listener but at the same time i, I love her independence um i love that on, on women and also her she has a very strong personality which i appreciate as well but at the same time she has a she has a good heart she means well i love her energy she's very outspoken has a lot of life 
to to everything that she does. <laughs> And I think that's that's things that I appreciated, uh, but at the same time, there we're very the opposite, mm-hmm. right? So I mm-hmm. think being the opposite kind of compensate the way we are, the way we navigate throughout the days and weeks and years, because when I'm down, she's up, and when she's down, I'm up. Mm-hmm. So we kind of complement each other, and we kind of look at each other's strengths and things that we need to stretch on. But at the same time, we kind of complement each other. So we kind of support each other where we know we need that support. And, and I think that's why um, I, and she was very honest. She was very, um, I love that. I, I like very straightforward individuals. Straight shooter. Straight shooter. <laughs> <laughs> How soon into the relationship did you guys know you were a couple? Oh, you know, it's so funny. I think um, like really right away, yeah. which is kind of crazy. But I remember when um, Javi said goodnight to me the night we left and he and we were all kind of like giddy and, you know, giggly. And and he goes, oh, my gosh, we're acting like teenagers, you know, we're just mm-hmm. like and I and I think also um, that was part of it. But also he he said, you know, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Actually, it was like tonight because he left after midnight, but whatever. I'll call you tonight. And I don't know. He gave me the time. I think it was like seven or something. And that really like touched me because it was like not that feeling of a runaround. Like, oh, I'll give you a call or whatever. You know, it was like, I'm going to call you and I'm going to call you at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And he called me at 7 p.m., you know, like on the dot. That's one of the things I love about Javi is that he's like super punctual. And um he was calling me from his nephews. I think it was your nephew and nieces, Amanda and Marcos is our nephew and niece, uh, their birthday party. So it was like, he stepped out of his family, you know, which I was very touched by. But for me, that was like, definitely a moment of like, wow, this is, this is significant, you know? Yeah. And, and for me is, is um, I always ask myself questions to really validate anything that is going on. And one of the questions is, uh, can you grow mm. older with this lady? And I'm like, yeah, I definitely can. I can definitely do that. I see that happening with us. So I knew I was very, it was meant to be that um, that we were together um, because I don't see Christina. I, we see a lot of younger couples and, and the physique is something that they, you know, they always worry like, oh, I hope my girlfriend doesn't do this and doesn't go this. But for me, it wasn't that. It was, uh, it was like, I oh, know I'm, I'm, I want her, I want to grow older with her and 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 really be pioneers. Um, so I knew right away, and uh, I knew right away that I wanted to marry her as well. Uh, we we actually hear that all the time. Do yeah. you really? Yeah. Like probably 90% of the couples that are together and and the people that we've talked with who have gone through a divorce, they knew that wasn't the one when they married him early on. Yeah. Wow. So So you guys kind of talked about that, about, you know, working on yourself and knowing yourself before being in a relationship, which I think is a really important concept is what we, you know, in your bio, you say, like, we want to help single people before they even get married how to heal their marriage before it starts. Mm -hmm. And we know that if you can't become the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, nobody else will want to spend the rest of the life. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's for sure. Yes. No, nobody wants to, nobody wants to go to the um, basement and and realize the the things that they need to really pay attention to. Right. And um, I think for us, we thought we had, for me, I speak for myself. I think I had, I think I had my basement taken care of, but it was a mm. mess. There was a lot of, I think the water, the water <laughs> heater broke. There was a lot of, but they were like, oh man, I really need to do something. And I'm still, I'm still there. I don't think I have a, a, a beautiful basement like you do. <laughs> I think I, literally. I think, literally. I, I think I'm, I'm still working on it. There's, there's some hidden things there. Um, but really acknowledge that we all need healing. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it's key. Yeah. And I think too, um, you know, it's so important to do that work because intimacy and long-term commitment brings so much up, you know, like 
anytime that you were abandoned or you were hurt or you felt like you couldn't trust someone or, I mean, you guys know this better than me, but I, I, that's the real life that happens. It's like, oh, wow, this is going on in our relationship right now, even though we're married and this stuff's coming up for me and this is how I'm feeling and you go through different periods. And so I just think that's really saved us a lot. I mean, it's just at least provided a foundation. So of course our faith is part of it, but I think a lot of that internal discovery and healing and work, which we do ongoing, but um, that's what sustains you because there are going to be tough moments where you feel like, wow, this is, this feels really hard. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as we kind of mentioned on your podcast that, we really believe that, you know, these, these issues from the past, it's inevitable that they come up in a relationship, right? They're going to come to the surface. And we use that analogy of the iceberg issue, right? Is that 15% of it is above the water, 85% under the water. And it's the 85% of, of all of our past relationship issues and, and hurts and, and wounds that are going to come out in our relationship. And it is the opportunity for each person in the relationship to help the other person heal, right? And so in your, in your past, I mean, what kinds of issues came up and did you find yourself challenged with in your relationship now? Well, I think um, I've struggled with depression and anxiety throughout my life. Um, and I, it runs in my family, primarily in the women in my family. Um, and so I think it, you know, I, it's one thing to kind of manage that on your own, but when you're in a marriage or you're in a relationship, it clearly affects Javi. Right. And I think what, to use your verb, Ray, that I loved was, um, it gets activated, right. Instead of triggered activated. Um, what happened was I had postpartum depression with both of our daughters, which also runs in my family. Um, which I really wish I paid attention to beforehand, but in any case, um, and it was really difficult. I mean, I, I had to lean on Javi, you know, severely. I mean, I got help, I got treatment. Um, thank God I wasn't like suicidal or anything, but it was, you know, it was a dark time. It was a dark time. And I, I definitely feel like, um, if I didn't, um, have any sort of skills, especially just like baseline communication skills and trust with Javi. Um, I think it could have definitely spiraled down, you know, I would have gotten worse. Um, but I also have had to really work on my own internalized shame, even as a social worker, even as, um, a helper in a helping profession around, um, taking antidepressants and, um, not feeling, like something's wrong with me or, you know, ashamed of, um, struggling with anxiety. And, um, it's, you know, it's definitely been, I think, educational for Javi too, because he's not, he doesn't have anxiety. Um, that's not one of his, um, issues. And so we've had to do a lot of like work together and education of like, what is anxiety? You know, like it's not, always choosing to feel something it's an experience, you know, so, um, it's just, you know, it's a constant learning process. And, um, some days, you know, I feel like we're, you know, I'm, I personally am making more progress and I definitely incrementally see that, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the stressors of life that things don't, you know, the rubber hits the road. It, you know, it's a continual process. Yeah. I want to kind of touch on this because this is such an important part of a relationship. They're very developmental. Things happen and um, each stage you change and then the same issue comes up again and you change again and it comes up again. And especially, I don't know how old you are, but when you hit menopause. 49. Oh yeah. It all comes up, right? Yeah. It's it's those hormones and, and the stuff that you can cope with and tuck away you know, when you're younger, it's cyclical. So there's only like one or two days a month that comes up. Right. When you hit menopause, it's just like, you know, yeah, it's like and, living in it. Yeah. And it's really coming up for healing. And I want you guys to kind of talk about that, that, you know, instead of just, this is something that you're managing, whether it's depression or anxiety, 
but it's, it's, it's a spiritual uh, journey where something is coming up for healing and we experience and feel it from the words of depression and anxiety, but it's like this truth bubbling up because we don't live very naturally. So what is your guys process of going through that? And, and how has that helped you guys develop and kind of merge as a couple? I sure. Um, I think we're very, um, I, I think it's a couple and a lot of people is, it's, it's, it's funny how other couples tell you what not to do and, and what you're doing is the best thing for you. Right. We see a lot, especially family members that say, Oh, what are you guys doing? You're doing too much. Christina and I were very, we're very pioneers and we also are very, uh, there's no end to where we're going. We keep moving forward. We don't settle for um, just what we have. We always are thinking and moving forward. So I like confrontation and I like to, let's take care of it. Let's, let's move on. Let's take care of it. I'm a planner. We're both planners. So I think we deal with that head on. We don't let it bubble up for us because I think mm-hmm. uh, if you, if we hide it, then it's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. So we, I mean, it can, it can be the smallest thing. We, we take care of it right there on the spot, right? Because we don't want any, we don't want any feelings to be hidden right or any Mm -hmm. any thoughts or any frustration anything like that so that's one of the things and obviously uh, as a faith-based couple uh we pray a lot Mm -hmm. i think we always looking for guidance and i think when you surrender to the higher power for guidance because you don't have the power you don't have the control that you think you do and when we say you know what help us you Mm -hmm. know help us god guide us what is the best option for us and discern I think that's one of the, the things that we use to really navigate through our marriage. Yeah. And I, I love what you're talking about in terms of like the context of healing, Jean, because I think, you know, what the frame, like the way in which you, we look through our challenges in our marriage and our own personal mood swings and growth and et cetera is, um, is how, what can I learn? Like, what is this teaching me? Right. Like, mm. why is this coming up for me now? And I also noticed what you're talking about in terms of like the patterns and I do see, you know, um, transitions like changes, uh, and we are risk takers. Both of us are, um, that's sort of our pact. Like we want to grow or we want to test our own boundaries and that's very exciting, but it also sometimes can be scary. It's like, wait, what are we doing? You know, or like, Oh, okay. Um, we got to like, ground we have to center here like take a deep breath um so because sometimes Javi and I we're almost like I don't know I don't want to be like belittling but like we can be like little puppies like like we kind of like get each other worked up and it's like okay we gotta chill like take it down a notch we we look like the divers in Acapulco we just go (laughs) we we take that dive and we're like I don't know if we're gonna hit any rocks on the way down but here we go yeah we I mean we definitely spur each other we like our energy is very much like um a unit and we feed off of each other but you know sometimes you got to take space you got to like okay hold on um javi's brother always is like you guys got slow yeah. down we don't, we don't like, slow down you know so um but i think you're right it's it's being able to look at those spiritual lessons and the seasons of our lives and it's always easier in retrospect definitely <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's an important part too, because it's that retrospect that keeps you going forward because you know, it's worth doing the deep dive or facing yes. something head on. It's, it's always interesting for us when we meet a couple who has, I mean, this one woman, one of the first things we start with, with a couple is resentments. And she's like, you know, my husband doesn't know any of my resentments, but my mom does. Oh. And that was such a big realization for her that, you know, her mom was her primary person, not her, not her husband. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that wow. hold back really wreaks havoc in a relationship. Yeah. Was we're, we're, I mean, in past relationships. I'm sorry. I missed that. Sorry. Is that something that you guys did in past relationships or did you figure it out to bring into this relationship? Um, I don't think you're equipped to even do that. No, honey. we're full. Hobby's not. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I did. Um, 
I probably didn't with a girlfriend more than, you know what I mean? Than my mom per se, but we, we had a clear boundary early on in our relationships that there's no third parties. Like it's, you yeah. know, say it here. Absolutely. And we teach that with our kids too. Like it's really important to, you know, real talk, like, please come on. We gotta, we gotta get through this. I know you may not be able to go all into it, but I want to hear like where you're at with this kind of thing um, yeah. from you, you know, yeah. from you. So that, I, I think we probably learned it, but Javi's deaf. That's kind of one of the reasons I'm attracted to Javi because he is really an open book. Like I'm more of a processor. I can have like, we're having this conversation now and I'll be like thinking about it an hour from now. Still, you know what I mean? I'll be thinking around like, oh, we talked about that. Javi's like in the moment. He's like, this is what's going on for me. Da, 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 da. And I, I have a tendency to, to need more time to yeah. kind of digest. And I, I learn as well not to let other people influence mm. your marriage not even your mom your dad your brother your sister mm. and and i always i always do that even when my sister um you know kind of complains I, i'm kind of like okay i don't need to know that it's not my place i don't want to hear it because that's that's the boundaries that i have with myself and i don't share the good and the bad um of my wife is my marriage so mm -hmm. that that way i don't i don't let any spectators at all right and i think that's mm -hmm. something that from day one we we i did that yeah i think it's kind of an accountability issue yeah. with yourself right like you have to you have to go to that person and be an adult and um and it's hard i mean i think you're right it is a learning curve in the beginning of your relationship to go there because you're going to have some scary conversations, but I think that's the gig. Like, I think you're just in it for yeah, that, you know? That's right. Now, you know, you guys talked a little bit um, on your website about running into some challenges in your marriage, right? And almost getting to the point of divorce. Mm -hmm. and maybe you guys can talk a little bit about that time and what were some of the things you guys were struggling with and, and then how did you kind of rise out of that? Sure. So that was after, um, our first, our second daughter, sorry, was born and it was, um, 10 years ago. Cause it was Javi's 40th birthday. And it was this big moment, you know, like I'm sure you've had situations in your life where you have a lot of expectations around something and he was having a big party and I was really not seeking treat. Like I was still kind of stuck and not fully in treatment and taking care of myself, um, after our daughter was born and, um, I, 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 we were just distant. We had, we had not communicated very well and, and it was a slow burn, you know, it was like very much, um, something that we were depleted individually as a couple, we were just running ragged with our kids. Both of them, I think were under three at the time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was just so many, so much going on. You feel like you're just surviving basically day yeah. to day. And, um, and that evening it was like this, like perfect storm of this nexus blowout where everything came up in terms of all of our issues. It was like everything out in the open. Um, and we had a, a full blown argument and, um, it was at the point where I wasn't feeling safe and, um, and we really, we were, we basically separated really quickly after that. I mean, for a while, briefly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt unsafe and I called the police. I mean, it was a big deal mm. and, um, and it was a lot of, I think, you know, it takes two and alcohol was involved. I mean, it was, you know, it was just like everything bad that could have happened pretty much happened at once. Yes. It, it, it was horrible. It was devastating at the time, really. And, and for me, going back to that analogy of the basement, I, I carry, I had a very dark childhood. And when you start reflecting now that I reflect back in all my relationships I'm thinking, wow, I did, I did, did some, and ang I was really angry when I will get frustrated, anger will come out and I will break things. And 
almost every single relationship that I had have had an episode of me doing that. Um, and then you kind of say, well, it's, you know, it's her, you know, she's triggering me. It's her, it's this and that. And then I think with Christina, what happened is got, it got elevated, elevated, elevated. Mm-hmm. And when you don't realize what you're doing and how it's affecting your marriage, that guess what? You know, like Christina says, my 40th birthday, we had alcohol. It got heat up. It was, it went to the point where boom, that's it. That's the end of it. Um, also I think, um, Not knowing that Christina, you know, suffers from anxiety and depression. If you don't know those things and how people navigate through that, you know, as a man, you're very solution oriented. Oh, let me take care of you. Let me fix the problem for you. What do you mean? I don't understand. And you get into Mm -hmm. that mindset. I, I didn't, I had no idea how to really navigate through that. And that, that was building a lot of frustration for me and to the point that I was getting uh, fr- upset, frustrated, angry. A lot of the um, family of origin dynamics mm-hmm. that you don't pay attention to. And I come from a family that they're very affectionate, very loud, very outspoken. And Christina comes from a family completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. Much more reserved and right? passive aggressive. I come from a family <laughs> that my dad, my, my dad died when I was 12. My mom died when I was 12, I'm two years old. I was in an orphanage for four years. So for me, it's like I am mm. waiting for Christina's parents to be this amazing grandparents that you see in the tv series where they go every weekend and they're super cool with Mm. the kids and they're so affectionate i didn't get that at the beginning of it i I didn't come not i didn't get that i didn't comprehend how the family her family origin behaves Mm. because i know they love my kids but at the same time i was expecting all these things and I think you create that expectations and, and you don't realize that, oh, man, the water heater down the basement is broke down. You got to take care of it. And you don't think your angry management issues are, are, are important for your marriage because that's the way you saw your dad. I saw my dad growing up and that was, that was I saw moments of violence where I'm like, oh, OK, this is the way it is. I never mm-hmm. physically hurt Christina. Mm-hmm. But I always wonder if I wasn't aware of that, where that would lead to, mm-hmm. right? And and even today, we 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 have an argument because we're not perfect. And it was funny because I told Christina, you know what? There was one moment that my inner critic was saying, break something, let go of the anger. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ah, no, I'm not going to do that, dude. No, I'm sorry, brother. I'm not going to give yeah, you. And he I'm has, not going to give you. I'm he not, hasn't at all, but it just shows it's, you. It's still here. It's like it's still here. And I get angry, but I'm like, I, I think I, we both are sober too. We don't drink alcohol we don't drink. anymore. Mm-hmm. But I, I am able to have a discussion with that inner critic and say, or grumbling or however you want to call it and say, you know what? I know you're still there, brother. And I love you, but <laughs> not today. No, not today. Mm. And, and it's a process. And also obviously praying and yeah, doing we, all that thing. That's something that you, you know, one of the, one of the important things to know about ourselves is the, the first part of our brain is this hind brain. It's a reptilian brain. And that's where we fight from because when we're in pain, we are just reactive. And, mm-hmm. you know, we share this as well in our story of, you know, real couples fight and real couples, whether you're healthy or unhealthy, you fight the same way. You throw things, you yell, you know, it's, it's not pretty because no, you're, it's not. Place, <laughs> you're having a temper tantrum, like you're four years old, but because the pain is that old and that deep. Mm-hmm. And so it comes up and out. What's the difference between healthy couples and unhealthy couples are those repair attempts of, okay, how do we bring this back together? How do we heal some of this stuff? So I think it's important to know that this is a normal part of the process. This is not, we're not talking about an abusive relationship or something pathological. It's, you know, we get wounded through relationship, we heal through relationship, and this is how it comes up. Yeah. Yeah. I I so appreciate you saying that, Jean, because I think, you know, um, at least I'll speak for myself. Like I was socialized where, you know, confrontation was kind of demonized, you Mm -hmm. know, like you don't lose control. You don't really, and in some ways you don't. And I think I rebel because I am a very direct and honest person and married, you know, I've sought a mate who could meet me there, but, um, 
but I felt like, oh, you're not, you know, it's that whole thing of like, you shouldn't act like that, or you shouldn't have these kind of problems. And, and so that's really part of our reasoning for why we wanted to share the book, because um, we just felt like, wow, this was like an unveiling. Like we, we did, we went to individual therapy, went to couples therapy, we went to our pastor. I mean, and there's a whole bunch of miracles along the way, but um, it was, it, it, it was a massive journey that totally transformed yeah. our lives. And I do think, like you said, that we would be very different people if we didn't do that, you right. know? Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why we wanted to do the podcast was to really unveil to the world that, you know, couples fight, <laughs> couples mm-hmm. have arguments, couples. Oh have- yeah. It's absolutely normal, but you know, behind closed doors, Couples always ask us the question, are we normal, right? Mm -hmm. Or is what we're going through normal? And we all go through these different challenges and struggles in our lives. And most often couples feel like they're just on their own, right? They're alone in it and they feel alone. And, you know, I, I like what you were talking about, you know, Javi, is that, you know, the growth that men have to go through is their own journey as well within the relationship. Yeah. And they have to find this place of, of uh, integrity within and be able to learn how to manage that anger, right? Because the number one emotion that men are taught to show is anger, right? But right. We're, not, we're not taught how to, sh- how to show it appropriately, you know? And so we're never really uh, mentored across that bridge into manhood. And, and we don't understand how to utilize our emotions in a way that is going to be a power, a place of strength for yeah. all of us, right? Yeah. And so that, that growth process for men, the growth process for women within the relationship, and then the relationship growth process, I, it just shows the complexity of all of it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think it's really important that you guys talked about that, that struggle that you guys went through because, you know, it, it's not Instagram world, you know, where everyone- <laughs> relationships are perfect oh yeah it's far from it (laughs) it's all ugly yeah and I and you know we try that too you know just you know Javi said like in the last 24 hours we had an argument and our oldest daughter is like is everything okay is there and I'm like yeah we just argued we had we exchanged words we were it's okay don't worry it's okay and she's like okay but she just needed, do you know what I mean? It was like, she just needed to check in. And I, I really think she's okay. But um, I try and give that message that, you know, it's it's going to happen. And I hear it with her, obviously with her sister, but I also see with her friends too, like they can, and you, and you can have altercations. It's part of being in relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And last night was a full moon. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. I know so, both of our work, it was just like, and our daughter, this is an aside because you just can't make this stuff up. She decided to clean her computer with a Lysol or the Clorox Clorox. wipe (laughs) and uh, fried her keyboard. So during class, so we're like trying to deal with calls for work, you know, and meanwhile, Javi's like, you know, the CTO figuring out all the tech. She's missing class, panicking, crying, you know. So it was it was a humdinger yesterday. Yeah, that's that's a, a, another time for another episode of yeah. parenting. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to kind of talk like, about this idea of marriage versus, you know, cohabitating or whatever, because when it gets this difficult, you have to have a lot of thought before you can say, you know, I'm done. And even though you guys separated, you were still legally bonded together. Like there, there's, there's that drive where when, if you don't have that, I, I think you don't feel that merger so much. So can you tell us the story of how you got engaged? Aw, go um, ahead. <laughs> I laugh because I, I try. This is another real life story. That's an, uh, yeah, here you go. That's, uh, here's the, uh, for everybody with the beautiful, I see all these Instagram, these couples and like, yeah, even my niece, my, yeah. God, my, my goddaughter had this amazing, crazy. So I'm like, on a oh, boat, wow, like, I'm like I never... yeah, signs, so all this stuff. I took Christina to Vegas. 
Um, we've been in Vegas twice. Uh, Christina's not a big fan of uh, Las Vegas. so I have a 48-hour limit there. So I took her once, <laughs> and they had the uh, Bellagio, the fountains at the Bellagio. Yeah. So I was going to propose there. But we had dinner. Christina had a couple drinks. and This is pre-sobriety. There was a conversation about her parents, and she got really, mm. really upset about it. She was, yeah. You know, she was upset. She was in tears. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. Well, there goes that moment. <laughs> Why pop the ring there? <laughs> so <laughs> you're like squash. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did. I think we, I did it at the balcony of our apartment. Yeah, where, it was where, sweet. Where we used to live, and it was just it was very, in our home. very. I told her, hey, you need to get home. There's something going on that I need to talk to you about. So she got worried. Once again, I didn't know her anxiety. Yeah. So, so I'm like racing I'm home. I'm like, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Now, now that I know, I'm like. And then I, I see like this. chocolate covered strawberries. And I'm like, so wait, I, what? That's how I propose because I'm like, okay, this is your only chance over here. So either you got to do it here at the balcony. But originally it was <laughs> the fountains of Bellagio. But hey, it didn't happen. I, and I had the thought in mind. But, you know, the interesting part for me, uh, I think proposing wasn't a big deal because I know I was going to marry her no matter what. I think the best part for me was my wedding mm. because my wedding was something that I visioned for her to be the center of that, of that day because she was the center of that day and she was the center for me. And, and we, we plan... It was funny. We we didn't go any reception shopping. We didn't look to a lot of places. And we went to one place. And I remember having this vision with her dress that she bought without me telling her. And the colors what we got without <laughs> me sharing. So it was like meant to be. And mm. when I saw her, I'm like, I'm getting married here. This is where the reception is going to be, you know, after we get married in church. And I remember the lady coming and say, hi, it was great. I had a great conversation with Christina. And I'm like, how much is it? Well, it's going to be this much. And, and we're I'm like, like ah! okay, right. We, <laughs> we make it happen, right? We're like, I'm a, we're go-getters. So we got to make it happen. We had a small wedding. And we made it happen. <laughs> we had a larger venue that, you know, that accommodated like 300 people. I think, yeah. The venue, we only had 68. 68. It was very but intimate. But that's a moment that I always would keep in my heart because... I think when you vision your wedding and you vision her to be the center, I, I think that's more important to me than, than the proposing. The proposing was, I wanted to do it so amazing. So Instagram <laughs> didn't happen, yeah. which I'm okay with it. So Yeah, and I could care less. I was happy. So, yeah. hey, so. it was all good. Uh, we hear that too. Mm -hmm. that people's proposals do you? aren't like these big ones done in stadiums or anything like that. It's just really intimate oh uh, yeah connection and yeah they, they're always apologetic when they would tell their engagement story because it's not really big and huge but it it's really symbolic of the bond and the connection that that yeah. they created together right yeah our niece brought we she we had her over for dinner and she had like a whole fully produced video of her engagement yeah, it was it was and it was like we i i actually was kind of disoriented yeah watching I was like, it. Why? It was, it's pretty interesting I'm like wow you have different cameras okay uh, right. yeah yeah but, but it was like and that's what a lot of their friends are doing it's just really different it was different just very so simple for, for us, us for us we honor that and we I'm super, yeah super grateful super grateful no regrets here when we talk about things like instagram social media the screens the movies the overabundance of way too much sexuality. How do you guys tend to that in your marriage? Do you have boundaries around things? How do you deal with the opposite gender? Yeah. Yes, I, we have boundaries. Definitely. Yes, we we definitely uh I mean that's that's a whole, I mean that's a big conversation. In regards to um I'm anti pornography. I'm I'm totally, you know, working with other other nonprofits over there because I other men other men as well educating other men so i'm i'm very and and for me is is something that can start with just following um sport illustrator women or any kind of fitness instagram because that's to me that's soft pornography and it will lead to something else because you open that um i, I also talk to men to think that 
even even a thought of you walking down the street and you see a woman and you have that thought that in a way something to think about because that can open the door um i'm very when i used to travel i never traveled with women alone i was mm. anti that i'm like i'm sorry yeah I, you used I, to I, travel internationally for work with mm -hmm. men only um so i i make that i'm very open I'm very open if I, even the clients that I have, if they're women, I share that with Christina, very, very open, very transparent on that. But at the same time, I don't go out and coffee, obviously not now, but before I didn't go out and have coffee with, with a, a girl, you know, a girl friend, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't do that. And Christina's the same way because we know that that's not maintaining a healthy environment for, and I'm very open to her telling her, Hey, when I was when I was single, yes, I I didn't realize, and I went mm -hmm. to strip joints, and and you know mm -hmm. I was in an industry where sometimes you need to take clients in that environment, and I was totally against that. Uh, afterwards, after I re I got educated, so we're very open about that, um, and and also we we kind of make fun sometimes on the movies. We're like, wow, you know, this is this is very interesting. We're like, this is very unrealistic. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> so we, we have that healthy because that creates fantasies and those fantasies are a lie. So we're very open about that. Um, I also yeah. want to just also add that we're also really just conscientious about like texting. Like if we have friends, we do a lot of group texts. Like I include Javi in a yeah. lot of stuff. Like mm -hmm. even my brother-in-law, like I'll include Javi or I usually talk to my sister-in-law instead of reaching out me one-on-one -on -one with my, it's like a, it's kind of just a respect code to your spouse and it's very much reciprocated in our families. Um, we don't vacation alone. I mean, there have been times where Javi's gone away with his brother. Um, and I like, obviously like I've gone to a funeral for my family by myself, but it's not like we do major vacations with mixed groups by ourselves. Like that's just not, yeah. It's not a priority for yeah, us. And, we want to have time together. Yeah, we don't we don't believe in and for other couples that do it, if it works for them, yeah, that's great. It's, it's we just don't not we us. don't believe in guys not out or girls not out. I, I think you open the door to something that perhaps you're not ready for it. Because we actually don't believe that that works for any couple. Yeah. Really? That's so interesting. The cup, the the temptation is there, and I'm sorry, you know, it's just. I just don't personally yeah. have any desire for it, to be honest. So that's but. that's the way we see it, and and we also are very open with our 10 year old and 13 year old about pornography yes, and about what's happening in TV. We're like, hey, this is not love. This is not the mm -hmm. way guys meet girls. Yeah, we talk a lot and about the way that. dating goes. It, no, it's all Hollywood production, so you can go. Oh my God, really. I have such a bad relationship with my girlfriend. <laughs> let, yeah, me model, let me model. Let me model about the energy of yeah. stuff. <laughs> if it if it isn't going to the relationship, it's going outside the relationship. Yeah. It, you can't you you can't have both. Yeah, but that's right. You know, it's like if you got a dollar, <laughs> if you don't spend it here, you spend it over there. You can't come back and spend it over here. You know, and yeah, so it's, it's right. spent. Yeah, right. and it really is. No, it's so validating. Yeah. yeah. It's not about ethics or morals. It's about health. Like if you want to show up and have an open heart and, and connect on a physical, emotional and spiritual level with another human being, you can't have a whole bunch of other people in the room with you. It just yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's it's right. so true. And it's funny because um, one of the things that we've realized more and more in terms of like love languages, Javi is really about quality time and um and I like a lot of verbal affirmation, but I also like acts of service, always nice. But he, we do, we do a lot of walks together and our days are so much smoother when we take a long walk. It's like, I can't, I'm sure you understand, but it's like cleaning house. It's like an emotional, like we're just on the same page, especially if we can do it in the morning and it's like, we're good. You know, and it's only like sometimes 30 minutes at most, you know, but it's that walk and how much you're able to be together and talk and share. And it's just like, like you said, it's kind of like filling your tank, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we really believe those anchor points of connection every single day are really important for couples and they have to be 
connecting in a quality way, not in front of a, a screen or not with other people too, right? Yeah. I'm not just hanging out with other couples. That's different than that one-on-one face-to-face time, which is so important, right? And too often couples now, they don't even connect with each other until later on in the day because one person yeah. needs for work, you know? And, and then yeah. they just don't, they connect by text or something over lunch. But, you know, that, that connection starting off the day and then ending the day together you know, is, is so important for a healthy relationship. So that's awesome. awesome. You guys do that. Absolutely. Yeah. COVID's opened a lot of doors that way. <laughs> yeah. That's the number one thing that we hear in couples that we start working with. We ask them, you know, how much face-to-face time do you guys have together in a week? No screens, no other people. And they almost always say zero. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's, zero. even though they love each other, they, that's why they don't have much relationship because right. they're not feeding it. And how yeah. what you were talking about as far as being bombarded by media, it, you can't go anywhere without being bombarded by media. You know, if you go to a restaurant, they have TVs on, you know, yeah. And, yeah. You know and, you know, there's advertisements going around and all of those, those images and the media is, is designed to hijack your brain. You know, we have That's a right. very primitive brain and, and, right. you know, going to, go to whatever is the most scintillating or, you know, uh, charging item or image that's there in front of us. That's how the brain is designed. And we have to actually work at it as far as, you know, removing those distractions from our lives. And for men, it it is very difficult, especially if they're brought up in an environment where it's normalized, right? I, I have clients very much the same that you know, these clients had to take their bosses to a strip club and it's just part of the culture, you know, of that business world. And it, it's just continuing and it's getting worse, right? I mean, I know you guys know Cole and we've talked with Cole and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really, awesome. I, you know, it's, it's really, really a, a huge epidemic and it is. Absolutely. yes, it is very addictive. Yeah. Yeah. And we even notice it with our kids and how we have to protect our kids so much because even dining, like one of our favorite restaurants, which obviously we're not going right now, but we frequented a barbecue place. Mm -hmm. They have so many TVs and our kids, you know, it's just, they're so susceptible. Like they can't even focus with us. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's not always their fault. It's just, and it's loud and it's like everywhere. I mean, it's almost like every, all your peripheral vision is occupied. And so it's a battle to really be aware. And that's something also like we both run and take hikes and walks and we try it with our kids too. getting out in nature. It helps like decompress some of that because just to counterbalance like your exposure, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've hiked the JMT, which we're also planning on doing in August this year again, which was a 20-day hike. You know, That's and awesome. You're away, totally unplugged. It really is. It changes you. So last question. What is it that your partner does that you know they love you? Oh, <laughs> um. Well, Javi, he's very, very thoughtful. I think I said that, but he, no matter where he goes, like, even if he just runs an errand or whatever, he always gets me a little something like it can be like the, like anytime he traveled, he'd always collect all the mints, you know, that they give you in the hotel and he'd put them under my pillow. And that's kind of awesome. Right. You're like getting ready for bed and you're like, Oh my gosh, like this is, and they were really like some really good chocolate too. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, he just gets me like, you know, if he'll always get me like my favorite drink or like, you know, he's just very thoughtful that way. He's, um, He's very sweet and it's just small thing, you know, it's just like these little small things. Um, but, and, and he also, I mean, we do this to each other, but we do send like love note texts to each other. And he sent me one this morning. It was actually a Bible verse um, that after our argument, it was really healing to read. And so that was very sweet. It was like, that's just, okay. That hit the spot. Like, yeah. thank you for that. And, well, Christina has many things, but one of the biggest one is um, she's very encouraging to let me dream and per, and support me in whatever initiative, either it can be personal or work or anything. So I love that. 
I love that in her because when you let the other person dream and support their dreams, mm -hmm. they're going to really be creative and they're going to open up. But when you suppress that dream of your, mm -hmm. your wife or your husband, right, you kind of controlling them. I see, you know, like I see a lot of couples say, oh, I'm going to change you. Don't worry. You know, I hear the parents say, oh, don't worry. You know, so on and so on is going to take, she's going to take care of it. And I'm like, wow, that's so sad. You know, yeah. you're, not, you're not going to let that person flourish. So I think that's the thing that I, lo that I know she's loving me because she's always there. She, she's my number one fan. So that's wonderful. That's wonderful, guys. So, you know, if, if uh, our listeners want to, you know, get in touch with you or get a hold of the book, where, where can they get it? You can just go right on to Amazon, um, Boundless Love, Healing Your Marriage Before It Begins. Um, we have it in audio, in Kindle, and paperback. And you can also just go to boundlesslove.us. We have some freebies on there. You can check it out. Um, and any upcoming, we, we also have a podcast as well. Um, and that's called Cafecito for Two. It's Facebook Live, and we're also on YouTube and also on um, a podcast any yeah. podcast server. Cafecito para dos. That's <laughs> right. That's right. We need to we need to change the mug and make uh, I know. I think eventually when we reach to episode 200, I'm gonna celebrate it and make oh that'd be exciting and make a nice cafecito mug. Maybe we can sell those or whatever. So. <laughs> and we are a nonprofit ministry, so um everything yes. that you contribute to us is for helping other other parishes and, and other couples. ministries helping helping their couples get ready for marriage so we do this uh you know very faith-based and from the heart because we honestly believe that we're not experts we're not perfect we're very broken but at the same time we are given we very open book and we're willing to share our testimony so people can at least get a taste of it and say, okay, maybe reflect and maybe there's something there that they need to work on. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was so great. Thank you too. So much for being on our podcast, Christina and absolutely. Javier. Thank you. You know, uh, we get wounded through relationship and we heal through relationship and human beings have been sharing their stories since the beginning of time to bond and heal and grow. And we hope that by you guys sharing your story, it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. Oh, Great. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for having us. We want to thank, thank all of our listeners for joining us today on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, which is coming up in April, mm -hmm. and our premier program called Couple to Couple, as well as our online community called Connections, please look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.